Hey, what's up guys? Dr. D here with another video on music production. And today we're going to be talking about music notation and theory and looking at MuseScore, which is a free music notation software that a lot of people are using. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. So let's learn some theory. Let's learn how to input notes into MuseScore and how to make a chord chart and some basic um, applications and notation. So let's do it. Okay, so um, you can download MuseScore from MuseScore.org. I just did that earlier this morning, and um, it's version MuseScore 3. So we're going to open up the program and get into it. Um, initially, it's going to prompt you to, looks like, save or create a new score. So you can open probably existing you know documents here that you've created previously. But we're going to call this um, demo. If you're taking the uh, uh, computer music applications class or any of the music tech classes with me, you probably want to call this whatever assignment this is. So I might actually call this homework six and put my name in it and the semester. But uh, if you're not doing this class, then you can do whatever you want with this. Um, all right, so um, yeah, you can fill out all this stuff, whatever, click continue. It's gonna prompt you for a um, specific uh, type of um, score. So if you want you know, treble clef or bass clef, um, or you want to have like a whole ensemble of different instruments, you would add these here. But we're gonna do the treble clef for today and keep it basic and simple. Um, you can pick your key. Um, we're going to start with C major, but you can you know change through the different key signatures here. And um, you can change, yeah, set pretty much set all the parameters of a music score, what time signature, what key signature, how many measures, the BPM when it plays back. So you can just continue that or click done and it will push you over to the beginning here. So a few basics about the layout, like most computer softwares, you have a lot of the tools and commands up in the top. They're organized in di different sections here. On the left side, there is a pane that has um, different uh, locations of um, um, categories and whatnot. So things like different clefs and time signatures, all kind of laid out similar to any other browser window. Um, as far as uh, zooming in and zooming out, uh, you can do this two different ways. It can be control plus and minus on a PC or command plus and minus on a Mac. You can also hold down command, or in the case of a PC, control. And you can use your uh, scroll wheel or your trackpad on your laptop to zoom in and out in and out like that. You can just click on the document and drag it around with the mouse left clicking to rearrange it too. So if I want to get way in here, I can you know basically get way into one measure or whatever like that. Okay, sweet. So to start out with, um, the first thing I'm seeing is tons of measures per line, and this is kind of crazy to look at. So one of the things I want to show you first is how to break the measures up into like you know groups of four or eight, so it's easy to read. So I like to do that to kind of start out. We're gonna hit the breaks and spacers, and this little um, system break uh, button right here. What I can do is I can drag this over to the fifth measure if I want to have four measures per line, I can grab this and I go one, two, three, four, five, drop it and boom, I've got four measures per system. I can do the same thing down here later. Say I want to have uh, eight measures per system. You know, usually twos, fours, and eights. You want to have even numbers when you're doing uh, doing notation like this. Uh, so maybe on this next one, I'll do eight. I'm going to drag it down. This is one, two, three, four, two, three, four. And then there's the ninth measure. And now I've got... Um, uh, well, one too many, it looks like. I can always undo Command or Control Z. Take that back. Walk it back. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the one after. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Anyway, it reacts differently, I guess, the second time around. Anywho, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's see if that works. Four and four. Okay, good. Sweet. So I've got, you know, the measures broken apart like that. Um, okay, cool. So one of the other things you're going to see is there are whole rests in the each of the measures. Um, if you're new to music notation, basically whole rests have the box on the bottom 
hanging on the bottom of one of the lines of, uh, of music here. So let me just zoom in here. That's gonna be a whole rest. If I want half rests, I can select that with the mouse click and I can go with the six, the number six, that's all it is. The number six is gonna break that whole rest into two half rests. Half rests get two beats each. Same thing as a half note. Um, you notice that this is four, four times, so therefore there are four beats in a measure, four quarter notes in each measure. A whole rest, there'll be one of these. If it's half rest, you'll, there'll be two of them. And if I wanna break these bad boys apart, I'm going to use a smaller number here. This is the number five. This is gonna break these into quarter notes. So literally you select the measure and you hit one of these number keys to break it apart into different subdivisions. If I kept going, um, you know, four, four time, that's four quarter notes per measure. If I hit the uh, three, that's gonna break it up into 16th notes. Sorry, if I hit four, it's gonna break it up into 16th notes, just like that. Okay, so that's basically subdividing each measure and the numbers starting from, uh, I guess it would be seven, maybe it would be a whole note if it does that. Boom, it does it. Okay, so seven, um, six, half notes, five, quarter notes, four, eighth notes, and then, you know, continues um, if you wanna get crazier with 30 seconds and 16th notes. But let's move on. All right, so that's breaking apart the um, the subdivisions of the rests and talking about rests for a little bit. Um, the next thing I wanna check out is um, adding notes, okay? So when you're creating a melody um, or notating a melody, you're gonna use notes and each note is basically gonna sit on a different line of the staff um, and how high or low the note is positioned on those lines and which line it's on and which time signature or which key signature this piece is in, that's gonna dictate what note you play on the instrument. Okay, so it's kind of particular to your instrument. But more or less, um, if you're playing piano, things are gonna be in this treble clef in the same key and that's what we're dealing with here. So let's go into note mode. If you wanna use notes, you hit the letter N and what that does is that activates the note uh, mode. Um, so it's the same thing as clicking on that N up here in the left corner. If you click on that, you're in note mode. If you hit the letter N, you're in note mode. Okay, so note mode's pretty simple. Basically, you're gonna select a different subdivision of note, whether that's eighths or quarters or holes or whatevers, and you're going to literally, um, let's do quarter notes, and you're gonna either drag your mouse over here and pick the note, by running the mouse up and down and clicking on whichever pitch that is, or you can use the letters, the keys. So if I wanted to put a C here, say we're gonna build a C major scale, I would hit C. Now you notice that it's the upper octave of C. Let's see if I can drop that down, I can. So if I hold down Command on a Mac and hit the down or up arrow, while I've selected a note, it moves up and down an octave similar to other uh, notation softwares, and uh, and that's cool. All right, sweet, so I'm gonna kinda continue that. I'm gonna go up to D and then to E. Maybe I go to F next and hit the F key. Oh my God, it's magic. All right, F, G, A, B, C, cool. I've got a whole entire C major scale, eight beats. All right, so major scales, um, another theory concept here, um, depending on the key you're in, a major scale goes do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. It's like going up all the white keys from C to C, and that's a major scale. And it's kind of like the basic system that most music notation is organized and built off of. Okay, and let me kind of explain that and what that means. So this is a C major scale. There are seven notes. The intervals go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So no matter where you start on any instrument, keyboards, guitars, whatever, if you go first note and then a whole step and a whole step and a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, you have a major scale sound. That's what it is. Okay, so when we play scales, we're essentially playing them up and down, almost like a lyrical melodic thing. So when you notate melodies or you write or compose melodies, you're essentially pulling notes from a scale. Um, and jumping around in random ways that sound cool to your ears. So uh, the notes all sound good together because they're part of a group. That group is called a scale. 
many different scales, many different keys, the whole thing. So you study that and understand that, but we'll use C major as an example. All right, so say I wanna play this scale back, all right? So with my arrow keys, I can basically change the positioning of where my selection is, and you hear the notes play as I do that, which is cool, you get feedback, you hear what it sounds like. I can also hit the play key up here, the play button, and it's going to play whatever has been notated. All right, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Major scale, cool. All right, if I wanted to add any accidentals, I could put it in the key signature in the beginning of the setup of this document, or I can select the note and I can hit any of the accidentals that I need to add. Okay, sharps, flats, sharps are a half step above that note, flats are a half step below that note. Naturals cancel out any sharps and put you right on the actual natural note or the white key on the keyboard. Okay, cool, so let's make chords. All right, so what are chords? Chords are essentially when you play more than one note at a time, all right? If you play two notes at a time, that's a chord. If you play three, that's a chord. If you play 10, that's a chord too. Might not sound great, but it's a chord. So whenever you play pitches, multiple pitches at a time. So to do that in this world, I can um, hopefully get there somehow. Oh yeah, note mode, I got my N, I've got this, and now I've got my cursor. I can stack uh, another note on top of this note. Oh, cool, right? Okay, so let's talk about this whole thing. When you put notes that are really close together next to each other, it doesn't sound great. Just like if I put um, an E on top of this D, they're like two notes right next to each other on the keyboard. Doesn't really sound that great, right? Um, it's grinding, it's too close together. But if I move those notes a little bit further apart, as in, uh, say instead of grabbing the note that's right after it in the scale, but I grab or add the note after that, like every other note, like you know that C and that D right there, C and D, I'm gonna stack those on top of each other. Ooh, that kind of sounds good. So you also see that it's got a nice little pattern of stacking, um, like the line, the line, the line, or the space, the space, the space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna form what's called triads. These are the basic building blocks of a chord. Three notes, okay, every other note of the scale. So I'm doing that. Look, I got C, E, and G stacked on top of one another. Okay, maybe I zoom in a little bit and make it easier to see. I'm gonna do the same thing here where I grab and add a F natural, the next space, and then the next space. That's D, F natural, and A. Okay, that's a chord. Do the same thing here. Ooh, okay. So you kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just stacking these notes up, making what are called triads, three note chords, by doing every other note of the scale and stacking these things on top of one another and forming these triads. Now here's the deal with this type of, um, with this, this system here. Some of these chords sound happy, some of them sound sad, some sound creepy and weird. Okay, that's, one, that's a weird one. All right, that one. Okay, that sounds happy. That's kind of sadder. So what I'm getting at is these chords are different types of chords. They're different qualities of chords. They're major, they're minor, and there's one diminished. Okay, so let's go into adding some text here to our notes in order to um, label these. Okay, so um, what I want to do with this is show you guys also how to add chords above the notes, okay? So, um, let's do that. To do that on a PC, it's gonna be Control K. If you do this on a Mac, it's Control or Command K on a Mac. So what we need to do is select the specific chord that we're going to want to, um, get out of note mode here, there we go. Okay, so I need to select a specific chord that I wanna add a chord symbol too. These are chord symbols. So Command K on my Mac is going to bring up the option for me to add a chord symbol up here. Okay. So this first chord has a major triad. It's got from C to E. That's a major third. That's like four half steps. And then from E to G natural, that's a minor third interval, a 
three half steps, like three fret, frets on the guitar, right? So anyway, these intervallic relationships, these spaces in between notes is what makes something major and what makes something minor. Something sound more the happy sound and the sad sound. And then you move all these other notes around different ways and you've got all different kinds of vibes of chords. They're really just feelings, major, minor, diminished, you know, they're specific things in theory when you use theoretical music theory language, but really humanly we interpret them, humanly we interpret them as like feelings. So um, we're gonna have a C major here. So this is C, oopsie, C major, capital C. Um, I'm gonna hit the space bar. And it's gonna play a C chord, boom, real quick. And now I'm on to the next chord. This chord is a D minor. It's got a D to an F natural, that's three half steps, that's a minor third. And then from F natural to A, that's a major third, that's four half steps or four semitones. So that one's gonna be, I'm gonna use lowercase d with a lowercase m next to it. It's kind of a general term for a sort of symbol for a minor chord. Hit the space bar. Okay, cool. So this is another minor chord, E minor. We've got the minor third and the major third intervals between those three different notes, capital E. Oopsie, nope. I messed that up. Actually, an E minor. If I click back here and I go Command K, let's see if I can. Oh lordy lord. Okay, that worked. Okay, good. I hit delete. I selected the whole thing and I hit delete and it wiped out the chord symbol. That's what happens. Just so you know. Um, once again, Command K. There we go. E minor. That's what I was going for. Space bar. So I hit the space bar after every chord insert. And basically what I need to do is select the specific chord or the specific note or beat that I want to add a chord symbol above. So a lot of times when you're doing this in a, you know, I'll demonstrate this later, but when you're doing this in a chord chart, you're gonna have a whole measure of E and a whole measure of F or whatever, not in every single beat, but you can obviously do that. So next chord is F major. So capital F, um, boom. Um, I've got a G major as well. Command K, oh, actually I don't need to do that. Capital G, space bar. Um, a minor here. This is the sixth note in the scale. This is an interesting one. The sixth note in a major scale is the, when you build a chord off of it or a scale, off of that sixth note of the major scale, this is the, one of the modes of the major scale and it's the mode of the relative minor. So the sixth note in a major scale is the relative minor. So C major, and A minor are relative keys. Same scale, but if you start on different notes or you build a chord off of those different notes in that scale, you're gonna have a different key, essentially. Same notes of the key, but minor, A minor is a different sound than C major. It's all about where you put emphasis and where you start and where you end with scales. If we started this whole scale on A and played the A, we would hear minor, not major. So it's kind of a weird trick that happens, but also every major scale you learn is also a minor scale. So if you learn your majors and you understand the relationship between the relative and the minor, the relative minor relationship, then you know all the keys and minors too, at least natural minor. Okay, so anyway, long story short, A minor right there. Um, we've got a B chord that goes B to D. That's a minor third, that's three semitones or three half steps. And then from D to F, that's another minor third. This is a freaky intervallic relationship in the triads of diatonic harmony or major scale harmony. The sixth, the seventh um, mode or the seventh note, seventh chord built on a major scale is diminished. It's got um, two minor third intervals between the root to the third and the third to the fifth. Usually it's one or the other is major third, one's a minor third, one's three, one's four half steps. In this situation, there's three half steps and three half steps. It's a symmetrical chord. It's a weird sound, but it is what it is. That's B diminished. I'm gonna use capital B and then a lowercase O, hopefully for diminished, and then I hit space bar. There we go, it sounds like diminished. Okay, so that's the nomenclature or the symbol for diminished. And then I have a major with a capital C to complete it. So if I play through this, we have diatonic harmony. We have the chords built out of the scales. Each one of these chords is in the key of C major. All the notes of the scale are in the key of C major. And the relationship between these two things, 
is what music is a lot of times. It's a scale, that's the melody, that's the lyrics, and the chord progression or the beat or whatever the heck's behind it, harmonically, is chords built from that key, essentially. And there's many different keys and scales that you can do this with, but that's the basic building blocks of chord scale theory. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to make a simple chord chart for somebody to read in the rhythm section, like a guitar player or bass player to be able to read the chords and play along with it. So not really necessarily having any um, musical notes individually, individual notes and melodies, but more just chords. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a bunch of quarter notes to a measure. Um, most chord charts, that are in 4-4 four, four time, we're just going to have four quarter notes with a chord symbol above each measure. So uh, what I've done here is I've um, created like four measures of, or two measures of, um, of quarter notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, I'm going to select those two measures, then go to Tools, and go down to Toggle Rhythmic Slash Notation. And what that's going to do is that's going to convert my note heads to slash chords. And this is kind of the general um, you know, layout of, uh, of a chord chart. You're going to have quarter notes, but showing in, in slash format. So what I'm going to do is copy with those two measures selected. I'm going to copy um, those two measures, come over here to my next two measures, hit paste. Then I have four whole measures of slash chords. So I can just copy this stuff once again and then paste it down here in the next four measures, and then paste it down here in the last four measures. So now I have three different lines, three different systems of slash notation. Okay, cool. So next up, let's add some chord symbols. So I'm gonna select the first measure in each of these systems, or each of these measures, and use Command K to pull up the um, input for a chord symbol. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a C blues, okay? So what happens in a C blues is we go f between the one chord to the four chord, okay? And if you're looking up here and you're counting one, two, three, four, and five, C, F, and G are one, four, and five in the key of C, okay? Very common chords to use in a chord progression. If you're writing a song, these would be the first likely sub uh, suspects that you would grab and try to create a chord progression from. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the C chord in the first measure. Okay, I'm going to hit space bar a couple times and move to the next measure. This is where we go to the F chord. Okay, Go ahead, push forward. There's uh, the third measure is going to be a C chord, pushing forward. Um, and going to another measure of C here. Command K, there we go. So another C chord. Um, moving to the next measure, this is gonna start with an F chord. So it's got the capital F, space bar, and back to actually two measures of F here. There we go, F. And then we're back to C. Capital C, capital C. All right, last line is going to go G to F to C, and then a G. Okay, cool. So when I go ahead and select that first beat there and hit play, you're gonna hear the 12 bar blues chord progression playing behind nothing. One chord, one chord, four chord, four chord, one chord. Here's the five chord, to the four chord, to the one chord. And then a five chord to turn around and set up the top again. Boom, it would just repeat. Okay, so that is a 12 bar blues chord progression, um, as well as a little bit of theory on scales and chords. Um, 
and kind of a little intro on how to practically use uh, Muse score to notate melodies as well as to make chord charts. Okay. Okay, so that concludes today's video on music notation, a little bit of theory, and using Muse score as a tool to notate your music and make chord charts. So, hope you learned something. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in future videos. All right, peace out, guys.